Hey folks, Millspec Ops Monkey here. Listen, we've been talking about this for quite some time and uh, the deal is back. This is through our affiliate program with My Patriot Supply. You can head over to monkeyworksprep.com and uh, the current deal right now is we've got a three-month kit that uh, includes a free Alexa Pure Pro water filtration system that is a $279 value. This won't last for long. Uh, when they're gone, they're gone. So uh, if you want to get that filtration system, jump on it. With every three-month kit you buy, you're going to get that filtration system with it uh, until supplies are gone. And so remember, monkeyworksprep.com. Jump over there now. Get what you need for you and your family. As these things start to unfold around us, uh, you will feel better. You'll sleep better at night knowing that you have taken the, the necessary uh, precautions for you and your family. Monkeyworksprep.com. That's it. We'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey, Monkey out. out. All right. Hey, folks. Millspec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your sit rep. It's 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. And it is uh, 5-1. So we're on May 1st, 2023. we got a lot of things going on. So, hey, if you would, before we get started, hit that like and subscribe uh, and that bell for notifications. So uh, when uh, things start to change, uh, we will get, uh, you know, that information to you. First and foremost, and uh, you're be in the know. So uh, let's kick it off, as always, over here in Skyglass. So we're going to jump over here to the Mini-Me board and uh, start to take a gander. Uh, again, like I said, we've got a lot of moving pieces happening right now. We've got the surveys in the United States. We have Russia taking a different stance uh, with their war with Ukraine. We're starting to see a lot more uh, aircraft being engaged and aerial strikes, etc. We've got drone strikes going on, uh, some footage from that kind of thing. And uh, it's, like I said, a lot of things moving. And then our economy is, and uh, I hope it holds out long enough. I've got a house that I have to sell and uh, I need uh, I need some legs under this economy for just a little while longer. So, uh, yep, yeah, right now we're sitting at uh, 240 aircraft up across the United States. Again, a lot of the clutter in here is going to be those text twos. So let me uh, reshuffle the board here. We've got 83 text twos. We'll take those out and another 26 T-38s. Uh, so that cleans up our board just a little bit, but we've got some cool stuff out there. Notice you got an A-10 that's running some routes uh, out near Vegas and uh, yeah, pretty cool little aircraft actually. And then this is everything else that's up in the air. Let's get into our watch list. We can cover it a little better. We do have that little A-400 there that caught my eye. I'm trying to figure out who it looks like. Oh, the Belgium Air Force. So there's two of them here in the United States exiting out. There's another one right there. Belgium Air Force A400s. And so uh, let's go into the watch list. We'll take a gander and then we'll get back to that uh, information because it is uh, interesting to say the least. So this is uh, this morning. You can see a lot of aircraft that are up. Uh, these are, uh, well, that one's going to be a Department of Nuclear Security. And then we've got a lot of survey flights like those, uh, as well as a lot of survey flights over Texas and active survey flights down over Florida. So it looks like they're down near uh, Miami doing their thing, Central Florida, uh, all over, really, coming out of Jacksonville. What you'll see when we look at the surveys are a lot of transitions. And then today you'll probably see them start to map more things out. But that one there, I mean, this stuff up the East Coast, most of it is going to be survey flights, except that one. That's going to be Venus. That's a training flight. That's a blue and white um, 757. And Germany, I got really nothing. That right there is one of, we know there's at least four up, but they're not showing. That is one of four German Mill Intel balloons that are up over Germany 24-7, capturing everything that you do. So when you're in that country, if you live there, you are getting caught up with all of it. So, all right, here we go. This is, uh, notice these are very particular points where they're flying in out of uh, these bases. Before, it was a little more scattered. Uh, New Orleans, I believe down south there, they're using port stuff there. All the way up the east coast looks to be ports. West coast, you've got ports. So these are C-17s that are, that are taking equipment, bringing it into the ports to be shipped out because it is, you know, you just can't load it all up on C-17s and fly it across everywhere you need to go because it's very expensive. So you put it on the slow boat and get it over there. Now, look at these. Again, nothing up towards the front end. This is all back end stuff, right, from the war front, if the eastern flank, as they call it. And it uh, looked like we got a lot of stuff going in and out of the Middle East. But notice this. 
down into Cape Town, how many flights we had down into Southern Africa right here, back and forth. That's a, a handful of C-17 flights. Again, this is the last three days, and it was around 200 and something flights total over the last three days. So they are still very active, still moving a lot of things. That Cape Town one I thought was interesting. And then you'll notice we get up here near Japan, Okinawa, uh, over the Philippines, and you have just a light uh, amount of flights that are there from a C-17 perspective. Again, I'm telling you, the war front is going to be on, it's going to be in, in Europe. Uh, if things go hot in China, uh, we ain't going to be able to handle that. I, I just can tell just, uh, it's just not, we're not, we don't have the assets there. We're not, we're not focused on that. You can see R-135, they're in Japan, Okinawa, flying some, a couple of routes, looking at things. Other than that, really not too much to speak of. Nothing going on in Germany last three days. Nothing going on in Europe, I mean. And then you just see one transition coming out. It looks like Lincoln, Nebraska headed, headed up towards um, Alaska. Okay, so, all right, let's look at the heavies. This is this morning, last 24 hours. You'll see this is a Belgium Air Force coming out of that Louisiana area where we saw the C-17s going in and out of. So I don't know what's up down in southern Louisiana, but uh, you definitely got some NATO boys hanging out in that general area. It looks like they may be picking up some assets and taking them across. Um, you know, could be foreign military sales. I don't know. And then, of course, uh, the pink, again, a A400 aircraft. The, the teal looking are going to be C-17s. The yellow will be C-130s. Just notice there's a lot of work going in and out of Cyprus, which is right just up the road from Israel in that general area. All right. And you got some stuff going in and out of Amman, Jordan, it looks like. But again, you know what I don't see? I don't see anything going into Poland right now. So let's see what happens. Let's get over to the refuelers. You can see there is some top cover there. It looks like some combat air patrol flying over right on the border of Ukraine and Poland. And then you can see some stuff going on there over Iraq and then over, it looks like, um, they're over, over the Mediterranean area. So, all right, let's get this back. It looks like that one's transitioning. MCH, I've never seen that call sign. It's kind of interesting. A couple reach. So some of these are bringing cargo back, I say. But, um, yeah, a little bit of stuff there. It looks like some Tampa air refueling going on. So we got fighters up over that. Again, this is last uh, 24 hours, and a lot of this is still actively flying right now as we speak, most of it, all right? All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna hop over here. We're gonna skip from that for a second. We're just gonna go uh, KC-135s here on our board, our live board, so that I can give you just a general idea of what's up over the US. We're at 15, and this is the current active tanker flights up. Notice Florida's got a lot of flights. Florida's getting a lot of activity right now not just from a uh, support perspective. Now, remember, these things are, when you have these up, you there's a very high likelihood you've got a lot of fighters up over Florida, okay? Uh, remember, too, we've got a bunch of survey flights going on over Florida, too. That's going to be low altitude. These will be around uh, 25,000 feet because that's where air refuelers do most of the work. And then uh, those survey flights are around 12,000 feet, so they're kind of low altitude in that general aviation type of uh, width, bandwidth, so to speak, from an FAA perspective. Okay, I'm going to drop down a little further here. We talked to refuelers, and uh, let's get into the three-day survey flights. Over the past three days, notice this is a transition run right here. It looks like it's uh, that's Stockholm just underneath my, my mouse, and um, it looks like it is going uh, north to south maybe. And then we get over to the United States. It's been very active. We had quite a few flights over the last three days. So from Friday to, uh, to, to today, it won't show today's stuff. It'll, it'll just kind of capture everything in the last three days. But you can see Texas has got some stuff. We've got a lot of transitional moves. See the long lines? That's telling you that they're moving from one survey area to another. And then if we get down, we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. You can see Texas down by San Antonio area. It looks to be mapping all of that out to the right side of Dallas, so that over by Tyler, that kind of general area. And then look look at the transitions as they move up to the northwest. So you've got a lot of, lot of new stuff going on up near Vancouver and uh, Victoria, and then Seattle, Washington, 
And then we looks like we've got some stuff headed out towards Rapid City, Minneapolis. There's quite a bit. Look at the, the tr these are a lot of transitions. So there, I expect to see some additional survey upticks in the areas where they are flying to. Okay. All right. That takes us back over to Europe. So let's get back over to the mini. Let's get into the main mix. Uh, we start to cover some of the news items going on out there. Uh, when we talk surveys, though, I do want to point this out. This right here is your is your sniffer. Uh, it's no, it's not Joe Biden, although it could be Joe Biden. Uh, but this is going to be your nuke sniffer. And uh, I say nuke, it has the ability to just pretty much anything in the air, right? Uh, it'll smell chemical, biological, nuke, anything that's not supposed to be there in the air, this thing can do it. Uh, what happens is this helicopter has sensors all over it, and uh, it'll just fly over an area. It'll take different altitude samples, and uh, then it's got a really super high-end computer that tells it all the stuff that's in that air as they map things out. But if you look at the flight log just in the last, you know, five days or so, actually this goes back to April 18th, so the last couple of weeks, uh, you can see just some light transitions uh, up here to Pennsylvania, um, Lancaster, right, or near Lancaster. Then you had them here headed back to Andrews. And then from there, they went up to Farmingdale, right? And that looks to be where they were last. And then they they flew back to Andrews. But if you look at the flight itself, let's just kind of bump into the April 24th flight. Uh, you could see it, it just kind of rolled out of here, came down down the beach, along the beach, back to Andrews here in the Senior Living Center area, the, the brown zone, as we like to call it. And um, yeah, I, you know, I could call it the red zone, but that we don't. We do that in, intentionally, okay? All right, so now here, this just notice... As this helicopter is flying along that beach area, notice the different uh, elevation changes, right? This thing is bumping up, coming down, uh, just taking different samples throughout. Obviously, this is his airspeed on the yellow here. Green line down here is altitude. And then you can see he kind of comes up high before he makes his descent to land. So, okay. But again, it's not tied to any of the survey stuff. So, you know, you would think if they were out looking for Club Ks, looking for things like that, that this one would be engaged because this thing is going to be looking for all kinds of dirty bombs, whatever it may be. It would be flying around taking air samples near the same areas maybe. Uh, but I don't see any of that. So maybe these other aircraft have some capabilities like that. Maybe they're not looking for that. Um, I don't know. We don't have an answer to that. We just know that they're doing it, and we need to pay close attention to it because it is new, and it is not something we have seen before uh, at this magnitude. Okay. All right. Now, let's get over here to Flashbang and see what he is up to today. It looks like he put his britches on around 9 a.m., and uh, he just kind of shimmied on over here. He's going to wrap up his day at 5.30 p.m. Uh, this afternoon with uh, Bob Marley, it looks like, and then that's it. So nothing really. i got somebody coming in from the Philippines. All right, which that's uh, probably we need to build those relations. Okay. Let's take a look at the dollar, because when we talk about Flashbang and his booming economy, we need to keep eyes on all of this stuff. I just noticed that it started to do a free fall, uh, what we call the dead cat bounce, and then it uh, somehow just miraculously shot up. Uh, it'll, it'll come back down. It always does. But let's go over here to this piece of it. And uh, you can see last five days we had some pretty big dips, and then somehow it just uh, made its way a little little. Uh, induction here of, of funding or something, right? And pump it back up. It, it, it loses everything they give it. So we'll continue to watch that. A lot of speculation on what's going to happen here. For example, we get over to this and one of the uh, economists is actually saying that the stock market will witness the largest crash since 1929 as a U.S. dollar, as the U.S. dollar explodes. And when he says explodes, he means implodes, really. It's basically going to just go kaput. Uh, but what they are saying here, and this is just give you, you know, the bluff, bottom line up front, stocks are likely on their way up while the dollar index, the DXY, that's what I just showed you, uh, uh, which pits the U.S. dollar against a basket of foreign currencies is likely on the way down. Well, that's what happened basically in the 1929 stock market crash uh, because it, uh, it, it just was a complete lopsided shift that took place. And when the dollar goes down, everybody's going to be holding all of the stock and inventory that they bought at higher levels, and uh, and it's going to be worth nothing. And so that's kind of what they're talking about here. And so anyway, not good. 401ks are going to be pretty ugly. Let's put it that way. 
Okay, here's another one for you. First Republic Bank is taken over by the FDIC and then sold to J.P. Morgan Chase in the third major bank failure of the year. They're saying this is the largest lender collapse since 2008, and uh, this uh, bigger than the Silicon Valley Bank, which just went under in March. So that one just hit the headlines. Keep your eye on the stock market today to see what happens. But uh, that may be why we see all this fluctuation on the dollar uh, for the one day mark where it started to do, you know, kind of the free fall dip and then it gets, you know, bounced up. So, all right, let's get away from the beautiful news of the bank collapses going on around, uh, around the world and, uh, check this out. Something good for you, at least, uh, at least here in Texas. And that is the Texas Senate has passed legislation banning hostile foreign nations from buying farmland. Now you may be, uh, uh, remembering, we've covered this several times, but Laughlin Air Force Base down here in South Texas, uh, the Chinese basically came in and bought up a large amount of acreage. I, I, I want to say it was 100,000 acres or something crazy to just to the west side of that Air Force Base, which was, I, I can't believe they allowed that to take place. Uh, but then they also did this up in the north. I want to say it was either Wyoming or, or, or one of the Dakotas where they bought a bunch of land as well. Uh, but it looks like here in Texas, we're saying uh, that's not going to take place anymore. So thank God for that. All right. Okay. Now, this I found interesting. This is basically U.S. production of bullets, shells, and missiles sidelined by an explosion at one Louisiana gunpowder mill. Now, this was not a recent event. It didn't just happen, to my knowledge. When I'm reading this article down here, this actually blew up in June of 2021 and the big takeaway here is it is still closed. So they've done nothing to get this back up. This place makes uh, M16 bullets as well as uh, 150 Mike Mike howitzer shells, uh, as well as, I mean, even Tomahawk and other cruise missile stuff. So black gunpowder, which is kind of crazy. Uh, there are, to my knowledge, when I looked it up, there are four other manufacturers here in the United States that produce that. I assume that's where everybody has been going. Uh, but to take one big one out of the picture is not good. So, um, especially when you're headed into war, right? So, but it just blows you away that they have not done anything to get this place back up and running. So, all right, let's move on. All right, over to the NOTAMs. You'll see we've got a box off the West Coast. I can't tell what that is belonging to. Let me see. It doesn't really say. So it looks like it's just reserved airspace. Uh, typically, when we see this, they're, they're out doing some NOAA you know, science stuff for weather. And then we get up here to the north. You can see there's some things going on. I want to say this is very, very close to Harp right in here. All right. And then got some things happening to the left side of Winnipeg. Looks like that's reserved airspace. Now, keep in mind, this is the same area where we see a lot of the Q9 drones uh, for Customs and Border Patrol doing some legwork. So I don't know what's going on here in that general area. Uh, but this is the spot where you see a lot of the unmanned aircraft work going on. So this is actually on the docket. Notice the timeline is from last year, August 18, 2022, to September of this year. So this is where you see that Q9 drone running right here. And then on this side, we see that Dash 8 that's out here doing some stuff. All right, we'll back it up. And then notice we've got this off of the East Coast. It's probably tied to some type of launch here in the general area and the usual stuff here that wraps around. Not seeing anything else that catches my eye. This right here I thought was interesting just because it does say that they're going to be basically knocking down the NAV GPS, including WAS and GBAS and ADSB exchange kind of stuff, or ADSB, sorry. Okay. Let me back up. Let's get over to Europe. We'll see if we got anything else that catches our eyes. We still have this launch area up here in Greenland. We've got some mill exercise exercises going on off of Iceland and Norway between the two. Then we get kind of dialed in here and notice that this uh, on the southern side of Sweden is, is now in place. Looks like a military air exercise extended south of the 61st north latitude. And uh, I think this one uh, going to May 10th. I don't know if that's the one that the U.S. is involved in, our Air Guard, but uh, that thought that was June for some reason. But uh, anyway, they got some stuff going on over that general area. Very, very tight. Notice this. 
Also an area looks to be exercises. Right here is where we've been watching the P8s that we're doing, looking for something. And this is Kaliningrad. This is Russia, right, in a big Russian port. And then we get up here. It looks like Russia's got some exercise stuff going on or something happening here over St. Petersburg and over uh, just to the left side of Moscow and then down here, same thing, right side of Moscow. And then Ukraine is always just one big cover-up, all right? And we'll get into some more details. There's a lot of things going on in Ukraine. My understanding is that the the new uh, spring uh, offensive is uh, going to be taking place around May 15th. So we're watching, uh, when we look at the flights, we're going to look, we're going to look for things to kind of plateau. If they're getting ready to, to do a push and that's 15 days away, they are probably, everything has got to be in place, I would imagine now. Uh, and uh, we'll see just stuff kind of peppering in as they get ready for that. Now that, in my opinion, is going to cause this whole thing to go hot, honestly. Um, that's just my opinion, all right? And you look at the attacks again from the three-point line at the Lakers game. We are getting popped over here in the U.S. One, just everything is coming to, coming at us from everybody. Like I said, they just don't like us out there very much. Okay. Uh, this is just a data point for you, but the, the U.S. Air Force moves strategic air tankers from Germany to Poland. It's at this base right here. They just opened up. It's to the left side of Warsaw. Uh, or the western side of Warsaw, and I'll show you that on a map here in a few minutes when we start looking at closer at uh, some of the bases there, like RZE, et cetera. But it looks like they've repositioned these. That is uh, mighty close to the front line, but I guess uh, they, they, that's where they want to put them. So, okay. And then here's one. Ukraine situation report. A drone strike puts a Russian fuel depot in Crimea up in smoke. There's some pretty amazing footage here. You can see where they took that out. Uh, we'll show you Crimea if you get back over here. If you're not familiar with the map, let's take you down. This is Crimea right here. So this is all Ukraine. Again, Ukraine is roughly the size of Texas, okay, just to kind of give you uh, things in perspective. But this right here is where the strike took place. This is Crimea. This is a Russian-occupied area, okay. Well, actually, it was all Russia at one point, but uh, they're still there, all right. Okay, so this is the fuel depot. I'm not going to go into the video of it all, but uh, you can see letting a lot of black smoke up. Uh, we have some other pictures of another attack from from the other side, Russia back onto Ukraine. So it looks like Ukraine took out this, and Russia has gone in and taken out one of their deals. Uh, this, just to give you a general idea, this is the Ukraine Pravda 23 website or news site. It says a large-scale air raid warning was issued throughout Ukraine, pretty much coast to coast. Uh, you'll see that it took place in the wee hours of the morning. They were saying that there were hundreds of these uh, missiles coming inbound or, or along those lines. It was a lot, uh, but the reality was it was not that many. I think it was about 18 or so. But, uh, yeah, it uh, had everybody kind of panicking in the middle of the night. And we'll look closer at that here in just a minute. And then this here, this is actually over on Yahoo News. Videos appear to show the aftermath of a precision strike by the U.S. supplied HIMARS missile uh, hitting a, an officer's quarters in Russia and Ukraine. You can see the damage that was done. That's a pretty good strike right there. And um, even looks like a little bit of blood on that stone. It's a little red. But anyway, that just took place. Uh, this is from the 29th of April. So let's get over here, and we're going to take a gander. I'll show you what some of this stuff looks like when it when it takes place. This, uh, to begin, this is going to be an S-300 uh, system that gets taken out by a drone. Now, you'll see the drone come in. I don't know the location or the date or when this happened, uh, but you could see that drone just fly in and pop that. Almost look like a giant mosquito. Uh, hits that missile defense system. So the S-300, it doesn't look like it was manned. Again, don't know the date when this happened. Don't know where it happened. I just know this is a video of an S-300 system being hit, supposedly, in Ukraine. Um, but you can see that's a pretty big boom, and then there's a little aftermath. I don't see anybody around it, so I don't know maybe they were manned or not. Uh, and it looks like the vehicle beside it was not really hit yet. But in this video, you can see that take place. It was it's pretty amazing, really. Let me back that up, uh, and you can see uh, right here where this this thing, look at this coming in. That's what it looks like. They're using drones to do that. That's just kind of mind-boggling. 
All right, now that that's going to be that piece of it. Now let's get over and take a look at uh, the Ukraine war piece as we look at the map and notice uh, there's some some big or very big uh, booms there next to Crimea where um, some big strikes have taken place. Notice also that right along the line, just uh, actually above my head over here as I point the wrong direction, there are some of the blue icons that have the missile defense systems right there, very close to the border of Russia. And then as you get to the center, all those blue discs are basically air raid sirens that are going off telling people to take cover. So it, uh, along with that news article I just showed you, is what was going on. Lots and lots of panicking happening. And then in the very center of this, there was a massive chem plant explosion. And uh, I'll we'll show you, as there are pictures from it. It happened at night. Uh, again, this is a chemical plant. Remember, Russia just took out, or sorry, Ukraine just took out a major oil depot in Crimea. And it looks like Russia, through retaliation maybe, took out this massive chemical plant. It's been there a very long time. Uh, it doesn't look good. You can see it lighting up the sky. Imagine the daytime pictures are pretty ugly as well. I don't know if that's clouds that are covering all of that or if that is actually smoke from the chem plant. But this gives you from the coordinates of the location, you can see where it hit. Again, uh, Crimea is right there, that little island down to the south side. And so it's uh, a little north of that area. Kiev is uh, to the top um, left side of that. I'll just gives you some bearings there, but that's going to be your launch lat for that particular uh, happening. So, all right. Now, let's get into the bases. Let's talk a little bit about what's been moving. This is going to be your camber flights. This will be either moving. Uh, it's precious cargo. Let's just put it that way. It's either going to be soldiers and troops or it's going to be things that go boom. Okay. And so, it looks like we've got uh, this one here landing. Uh, it's on the final. It looks like it's on final. It's at uh, 1,500 feet. And that little down arrow right there means it's descending at 171 miles an hour, 1,500 feet. It looks like it's landing there in Alaska. And then we've got uh, this one here. This is an MD-11. Also on, uh, looks currently descending, but it's at 38,000 feet, 449 miles an hour. And it looked like it, it actually just took off out of Bahrain. And uh, if that is the case, it's just leveling off probably at that altitude and not landing. All right, so taking off Bahrain. We've got this one near St. Paul Island, Alaska. That's up here. And then uh, one over here at uh, near Osan Air Base, which would be down here, but uh, we, we don't see that. At least it took off from there. That could be the one that's actually landing up here. All right. Again, camera flights. Now, this is, I think, Biggs Army Airfield. Let me just, yeah, Biggs Army Airfield. This is the little corner here in Texas. Uh, this is Mexico down here, just to give you some lay of the land. All right. Now, these flights that you see all kind of tucked into that corner, that's going to be commercial flights. That's that's not stuff coming in and out of bigs. These are United Airlines, United Airlines, you know, Dallas, uh, Delta Airlines, etc. cetera. Uh, but coming inbound arrivals, looks like we've got an Atlas Air coming in from Indianapolis. And then X filling out of there. It's headed to, to Houston Bush. We'll see where it goes. That one may end up at Guantanamo Bay. Could be. A lot of the times we see them leave there, they go to Houston, they land, and then they take off again. And it's going to be usually military police to get just doing a rotation. I think we're near that time now for the big rotations going on at Guantanamo Bay. And then en route, we have one United Airlines 777 coming in. That's a, a 777-300ER. The ER stands for Extended Range uh, coming out of Portsmouth. And then it looks like here that one is headed back to San Francisco. That's home base operations. So it looks like it's bringing some troops in maybe from here. And then uh, from there, it's just going to deadhead, what they call deadheading back. So it'll be an empty flight, just flight crew on it, headed back to San Francisco home base operations. Okay. Now let's get, uh, this is going to be, where are we looking at? Dover, right? Dover. And let me see if I've got anything catches my eye. I got a B-703. That's the Israeli Air Force coming inbound. Landed at Ter Sierra. Uh, we will see. Um, maybe we will. No, we probably won't. I've already covered, I think, that aspect of, uh, of the flights. But, yeah, so this one took off out of, out of Israel. It landed there and you know, did a little gas and go, and then now it's headed to Dover. So it looks like the Israelis coming inbound to Dover. 
And got a reach flight coming in from Kelly Field, San Antonio. That's going to be one of those C-17s. Outbound, it looks, uh, we've got this Camber flight. It's a 747-400 headed to RZE. We'll look at that base here in a minute. See anything else on here that catches my eye? Nope. Okay, let's move on. And then over here, this is Ramstein, all right, Germany. Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany. Uh, we've got an inbound Atlas Air coming from Baltimore, Washington. And then it looks like from there, um, we also have a 747 Atlas Air headed to Hong Kong. Another reach down there. Uh, again, these flights, when they take off out of Germany, they'll fly, they'll fly directly east uh, over China. They'll do uh, all of that. They don't uh, because they're not carrying troops. They're not carrying anything that goes boom. Uh, they can fly in that airspace. But when they're coming back, even though it's probably shorter to go from China into, into Europe, they have to go the other direction. They have to head east because they're carrying either troops or something that goes boom, and China doesn't allow that. All right, here's your RZE. Again, this is Ukraine right here. This is the border between Ukraine and Poland. This is a forward operating base. So when the attack, if, if the spring offensive takes place, a lot of it's going to be coming out of here. Uh, you'll have it coming out of um, Hungary and, uh, you know, the troops down in like Budapest, et cetera. They'll, they'll all be engaging. So, uh, sorry, Bucharest, not Budapest, Bucharest. Okay. So, uh, well, at least I hope they're not coming out of Budapest because that would be a long flight. So, all right, let's take a look here. RZE-wise, we've got uh, this one, Camber Flight, Camber Flight. So they still have, this is stuff more than likely you're going to be artillery rounds or equipment coming inbound from Asia. Again, they're stealing or taking things from Asia, bringing it to Europe. That's what tells me that uh, nothing, we're not going to be doing anything in Asia, uh, anything big at least. Uh, everything is going to be going hot in Europe. I would imagine China will probably take the time to uh, go after Taiwan about the time we go hot with Russia. All right. So uh, Camber Flight, again, Camber Flight, we get down further. Camber Flight headed in from Nuremberg. And then this one's coming in from Dover, 747-400, and another Anchorage, Alaska, uh, that's coming in also shown as Camber. Again, I you know don't think those are troops. More than likely, those are going to be bringing in artillery, uh, the half a million rounds of artillery coming in from South Korea. Okay, and then here, notice here on the departure board, National Cargo, 747, Atlas Air, 747. Uh, that's not one. Coletta Air, 747. We're going on down. And we've got another Coletta, another National Cargo. And, man, there's a lot of 747s rolling in and out of RZE. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. All right. National Cargo is very busy today. Notice they do have this one, RZE. We just talked about that. Anchorage, Alaska. This one, Muscat. I don't, I don't know where Muscat is. Uh, but um, And then here, another RZE. So it's two flights coming out, RZE, all 747-400s. If we look at the flight map, you can see very, very busy. That's a lot of flights for NCR. Now, I do know they carry troops as well, but they're probably getting in on the artillery piece. So it looks like we see this burst of uh, artillery and equipment going into the forward operating base. Like I said, I, I expect that's going to plateau here shortly, right before it goes hot, and then you'll see the replenishment coming in uh, if that base sticks around, because more than likely that base is going to be a target, uh, and they're going to take that base out. So once they take that base out, uh, if we've got all our stuff still there, it's going to be an ugly uh, situation. So, all right, another one, world... Uh, uh, sorry, Western Global Airlines, 747-400 Anchorage, Alaska to LAX. I don't know what they're doing there, but uh, that's where they're headed from there. Omni, looks like we've got this one coming out of Subic Bay, headed to Guam. It just actually did a round robin, so it flew there and back. Uh, that's a 777-200. Could be bringing some troops in. Uh, we do know that Guam is a very, uh, it's a forward operating base, so to speak, for that region that has uh, not, not as forward as Japan or Okinawa, but uh, that's where all their training and everything has been taking place here in Guam. And then last up, we're going to take a look at the immigration flights. Very light today. I mean, very light. Uh, looks like we've got one headed down to uh, Bogota, Colombia from Harlan uh, right here. That's going to be at the Texas border. And then one coming out of also the Texas border to Las Vegas. And, uh, 
who knows if they're taking people there or back. We don't really know, but we just pay attention to it. All right. All right. Listen, that's going to be our sitting up for today. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. And um, it's, uh, you know, it, it does look like we're about to go hot in Europe. And I don't think it's far off, uh, but uh, don't, don't, won't worry about it. There's nothing we can do to change it. And uh, it's always about faith over fear. And I have to just remind people of that. Uh, God is in control. So let's just uh, just buckle down and, and, uh, and enjoy the ride because there's nothing we can do to change it, right? So, all right, that's it. You guys stay frosty. Keep that powder dry. We'll talk soon. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.